What is up guys, this is Pinzo, back with another video today. So today we're doing another one of my Dungeons and Dragons story time videos. I really enjoyed the last one I did, so we're gonna do another one today. And without dragon intro out too long, we'll get right into it. In this campaign, this was one of the first campaigns that I had DM'd, that I had been the Dungeon Master for. And I was playing with a lot of really new players. It was maybe the third or fourth time we had actually played in this campaign. And of the players in the campaign, I think four out of five of them had never played Dungeons and Dragons before. So it was a pretty fun experience to kind of get to DM for these brand new people coming into Dungeons and Dragons. But they didn't know a lot of the stuff about combat that you would know as a veteran player. They don't know that you can kind of like just rule of cool a lot of stuff through combat and just wing it and you'll be fine. They thought it was basically what was on dice is what won you combat. So we get into this combat. It wasn't even supposed to be a combat. They were supposed to watch a cult uh, summon some big demon. I don't remember exactly what it was called. It's like some snake demon or something like that. He had a name, but I forgot what it was. They were supposed to witness this and then bring it back to the king and tell the king, hey, there's this cult and they summoned this thing, but the king was going to be part of the cult and it was going to be this whole like downward slope thing. But instead, what happens is they see this big coven of this cult, and there's like 50 of them in this summoning, okay? And there are five players, and my players are like level three. So our ranger has the bright idea of pulling out his bow and shooting the guy that's reading the incantation. What? Bro, you cannot open combat into a room of 50 people like i don't care how like who the 50 people are you cannot engage combat with five people into 50 people but so he shoots this guy and i mean it was a good shot he didn't like crit or anything but it was enough to make him stop reading the incantation which is where the whole thing started to go sideways really because as soon as he stops reading the incantation uh the floor starts glowing they were standing on some sort of, you know, symbol like you would if you were reading a summoning. However, when summonings don't get finished, or they get misread, or they get mispronounced, or something like that, that's when they go bad. Like, if someone starts a summoning, you better let them finish it. It doesn't really matter what they're summoning. If you interrupt them, something bad is going to happen. And that's what, that's what, that's what happened. Basically, when our ranger shot this guy that was reading the incantation, the guy dropped the book that he was reading out of, and out of the floor comes Belzenlock, who is just this really, really bad demon, okay? And it's not someone that you really want to mess with, but it's also not someone this, that this cult wanted to mess with. This cult was just trying to summon a demon to like terrorize the town so that they could like get money for a ransom so that they could put the demon down or something like that. But instead they end up with this big ass demon who basically is just going to kill everyone. Like he's been stuck on the demonic plane for a reason and now he is not on the demonic plane anymore. Which means our plane is now in a lot of trouble. At this point basically all hell breaks loose. Our players start going into combat, our wizard, he's flinging spells, our fighter and our paladin, they're up in the front, our ranger is cowering somewhere because he was a bit of a little pussy or something like that, I don't know. But at this point, the uh, cult is starting to get their uh, whereabouts about them. They were kind of disoriented from the sudden attack. And now the cult is coming at the party. And when it's 50 verse 5, you're basically screwed. So the party, they start trying to do some sort of retreat, and it's not really working. And Belzenlock is basically just setting stuff on fire at this point. He's kind of like flexing his muscles, you know, like he's a little rusty. And at this point, the characters are trying to get out, and it's just, it's not really working. They're kind of getting surrounded. And this is where the veteran players would maybe have a chance thing comes in because the one veteran player in the party was playing Cleric. And Cleric is a 
good class to play if you're a veteran player because you, you can really carry a campaign from the cleric position because they can be charismatic, they can actually do stuff in combat, they can heal your teammate when you need them to. Like that kind of stuff, cleric is a very strong class to like be supporting with and if you're a veteran player in a party of new players you do want to be supporting the new players. So this veteran player basically pulls out his holy symbol and then I don't want to say that he seppuku's himself but he basically cuts his stomach I, I don't know exactly what he was doing. He says this all really fast, and I just kind of let him go for it. He was like, I pull out my holy symbol, and I cut myself in the stomach. So it's not like, like not deep enough to where his organs are coming out, you know? But like, he's bleeding pretty good. And he says some some kind of prayer as, as he's like bleeding on his holy symbol, which is, it, he was some cleric of a war god or something like that. So I guess it kind of makes sense that that's how he would attempt to get his god's attention. But it was a little weird for the rest of the party to hear. But so he goes for it. He just sends it. He's just, he says, I bleed on my holy symbol. I say this prayer. And I'm like, if he's going to do that right, I'm not going to stop him. Like, I'm going to let him roll, see if he can like get the the favor of his deity for this for this portion of the battle. And then he does. See, I wasn't expecting him to, to actually do it. It was a pretty high DC, even with, uh, I'm going to say, quote-unquote, ritual he did. It was a pretty high save DC to, to actually contact his god. And then, then he then he natural 20'd it. And at this point, I was a little scared because generally when you earn the favor, I'm going to say, quote-unquote, favor of a god, when you pray to a god and divine intervention kind of happens, usually the character gets to kind of say what should happen the dm is the one who ultimately gets to play the god that's coming to save them but the character kind of gets to say like what his prayer was and what he wants the god to do and so basically this war god comes down from the heavens kind of he just kind of materializes it's not like this big thing he kind of just shows up and he kind of just looks like a guy like a normal guy, he's got a big battle axe, but he's like nine feet tall or something like that. His skin kind of glows red. Uh, he's got some symbols carved into his body. And he comes down, and as he comes down, he, he when he comes down, he kind of incinerates the area around him, taking out quite a few of the bad guys. And then he proceeds to swing his battle axe, kind of like like spin to win just in a circle and takes out a, a pretty good portion of the enemies again and at this point he turns around sees Belzin lock in the middle of this summoning circle and charges him which is like you don't really want to be in any sort of general vicinity of a god fighting a demon because you're probably gonna die just of like collateral damage so at this point most of the party is basically dying also, but they're trying to make a retreat, except for this cleric, who says that he wants to stay and, I quote, help his god, which I don't know what his plan was. Like, bro, you cannot help a god fight a demon. You are a cleric. It's, not, it's just not, not going to work, okay? It's just not going to work. But so he, he thinks that he can do it. So he stays behind, and he, I say quote-unquote help. He really didn't do anything. He used, like, burning hands or something like that one time. And it's like, that doesn't... I, bro, you did 12 damage to a demon. Good job. Thumbs up. A, a plus for you. Then the players... The players actually ended up getting out. But at this point, the cult... The cult died. They, they literally... They murdered everyone in the cult. There were, like, three stragglers, and they, they picked them off. Now my campaign, which was supposed to be kind of built around this cult that was like summoning things that our players had to deal with and then the king is kind of like the forefront of this cult but he looks like a normal king and he acts like a normal king and they no one knows that he's in the cult my campaign that's supposed to be around that premise now 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 there's no cult so i have to continue to find a way to play this campaign without any of my starting material so guys, this was the story of how my players completely derailed my campaign. 
really, really early into it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please comment down below what kind of stories you want to hear. I have D&D stories covering all sorts of genres, so comment below what kind of story you'd like to hear, and I'll see if I've got one that covers your topic. And as always, guys, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. And as always, boys, I'm Pinzo. This video's done-zo. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.